A license to allow a severely epileptic boy to be treated with illegal cannabis oil after the drug had been confiscated from his family. The Home Secretary, Sajid Javid, said he used exceptional power to grant a license for 12-year-old Billy Caldwell. Billy is currently in hospital after suffering two life-threatening seizures overnight. His mother had obtained more of the drug from Canada, but it was taken away after she landed at Heathrow. Keith Doyle takes us through the story. When Billy Caldwell and his mother returned from Canada on Monday with medicine containing cannabis oil, it was confiscated by customs after they declared it at Heathrow Airport. Billy was taking the oil to help control violent epileptic seizures. Now he's been admitted to hospital in London, where this morning his mother said the attacks have returned and his condition is life-threatening. Billy is getting the best care in the world here um, and, and, and I feel safe here. Um, at this particular hospital was Billy. Um, so uh, again, it's just one step at a time, um, praying for a miracle, really. This afternoon, the Home Secretary gave permission for Billy to use the medication. In a statement, Sajid Javid said, I have used an exceptional power as Home Secretary to urgently issue a license to allow Billy Caldwell to be treated with cannabis oil. We have been in close contact with Billy's medical team overnight and my decision is based on the advice of senior clinicians who have made it clear this is a medical emergency. My experience throughout this leaves me in no doubt that the Home Office can no longer play a role, in fact play any role, in the administration of medication for sick children in our country. Billy has intractable epilepsy, which can cause up to 100 serious attacks a day. Two years ago, he was given medicine containing cannabis oil in the United States, which slowly shortened the length and number of attacks. Back home, his GP took the decision to prescribe the cannabis oil, but the Home Office later told him to stop, as it contains element THC, the psychoactive chemical found in marijuana. This cannabis is being grown legally in Canada for medicinal use. While there is some evidence that some formulations may have medical benefits, it remains illegal in the UK. But this afternoon, Billy Caldwell is once again being treated with the medication his family says is life-saving. Keith Doyle, BBC News. Let's talk now to Peter Reynolds, who's the president of the cannabis reform charity CLEAR. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Presumably you think in this case the Home Office has finally done the right thing. Well, at last, yes. I mean, it's wonderful news and let's raise a cheer. But let's also be extremely angry at what's gone on here. And this isn't just a recent thing. and This doesn't just apply to Billy. It also applies to Alfie Dingley. And there are hundreds of thousands of people in this country that already use cannabis as medicine. And, and for something like 50 years, the Home Office has been engaged in systematically misleading and misinforming people about the truth about cannabis. And it's even still going on today. I mean, this suggestion from Sajid Javid that he's used exceptional powers is just nonsense. Integral in the Misuse of Drugs Act is that it gives the Home Secretary the power to license any act that would otherwise be unlawful. He could have done this at a stroke of a pen weeks ago, and he could have done it for Alfie Dingley weeks ago, and he could do it for all the hundreds of many people who need access now. Now, we've heard a lot over the years about cannabis being used, particularly for pain relief, I think. But in this case, we're talking about something more widespread, aren't we? In, in the case of Billy, it's about trying to alleviate those seizures and fits that he's having. How many people do you think there are across the country uh, who are using cannabis for medicinal purposes? Well, we have good data, which we provided to the End Our Pain campaign when they started a couple of years ago to show that probably about a million people are using cannabis, at least partly for what they would term medical reasons. And the trouble is that, I mean, the, the, the response to this from government has always been to respond to any argument for medical use with the arguments against recreational use. It's so, it's so disingenuous. The evidence is overwhelming. I first gave evidence to Parliament on the subject of medical use of cannabis in 1983. And the evidence was strong then. And it's been getting stronger every year since. Britain is now at the very back of all first world nations in allowing access to this substance as medicine. And it is vital. It's inhumane what's going on.
And that's interesting because there are people who have argued saying, look, it's got to be proven that it works, uh, that there isn't enough evidence. But, but globally, you've alluded there to the fact that other countries do allow the legal use of cannabis for medicinal there purposes. Lots, there, have been lots, there have now been lots of clinical trials. There aren't enough clinical trials. There are, in the UK, there aren't clinical trials because the Home Office simply won't, in net and won't allow them. I mean, the Home Office has this position that it's open to applications from companies wishing to develop cannabis medicines. But I can speak to my first-hand knowledge. I've been involved in seeking with the Home Office to allow one of the major Canadian medical cannabis companies to gain a license to develop a cannabis medicine in the UK. And the Home Office simply rejected the application out of hand. So everything you hear from the Home Office about this is dishonest. That's the only way to put it. And, and as, far as, as, far, as far as getting a, a, a approval and checking the safety of the medicine is concerned, in every jurisdiction in the world where cannabis is legally available as medicine, a separate set of regulations has been set up for it. Because you cannot regulate a plant-based medicine that contains something like 500 molecules in the same way as you regulate a single molecule pharmaceutical medicine. And by try, it's, again, it's just disingenuous. By trying to shoehorn this, med this complex medicine into the same system as the MHRA uses for, med for medicine synthesized in a lab, you, it, it's ludicrous and it's, it's disingenuous, it's false and misleading. Thank, let's hope this is a breakthrough. Uh, just tell us about the other uses, other kind of examples you've come across uh, in the evidence that you say that you've seen and given uh, testimony about how it is used by, by different patients for different conditions. Well, one, one, of the main, one of the main uses of cannabis is for what's called neuropathic pain. And this is a type of pain that is caused through the nerves. And it's different from the sort of pain that you would get from a cut or a traumatic injury, which is called nociceptive pain. Now, in that sort of pain, then opiates can be very effective. But in neuropathic pain, such as spinal injury or the pain associated with fibromyalgia and multiple sclerosis, opiates don't, often don't have a, a very good effect. So in neuropathic pain... Can cannabis and cannabinoids are, are uniquely effective. And again, there is very good evidence for this. Evidence which the Home Office and the British government, not just this government, I have to say, the Labour Party has been just as bad on cannabis as the Conservative Party. There's substantial evidence which they've been refusing to look at, refusing even to consider. It's not like they've taken on board the arguments, considered the evidence. They've been refusing even to look at it. And thank God they've now been forced into this position. It's about time. OK, Peter Reynolds, the president of the Cannabis Reform Charity Clear. Thank you very much indeed for speaking to us this afternoon. Thank you.